Welcome! In this video we will take a good look at the Rearguard V2, a relatively new fencing mask for HEMA. I got it around 3 months ago and while it still awaits its first tournament, I would like to share my initial thoughts with you. What's so special about this mask? Well, it's part of a new generation of masks designed for being used in HEMA. As such, the mask is quite a bit longer and has a mesh backplate to protect your noggin. It also comes with a back hat protector in comparison to a standard fencing mask. The Rearguard V2 is quite a bit heavier than my trusty old All-Star mask, even with an overlay, coming in at around 2.2 kg compared to 1.6 for the All-Star. The Rearguard V2 features an inner reinforcement bar to prevent the mask from collapsing from heavy impacts. Rubber bands on the outside and most importantly a specialized padding on the inside. Be aware that this makes the inside of the mask quite a bit more crowded. So if your current mask is already tight, get a size bigger. For my very average head, the size of medium did not change and I could bend the rearguard V2 just in the right shape by placing it between my thighs. The additional padding makes receiving hits a lot nicer compared to a mask without an overlay. The additional weight also helps a bit, but don't get fooled. A mask and padding only help until a certain point. You should definitely check out the video I made on the subject. The rubber bands, while protecting mainly the mask itself, are advertised as helping with impact absorption. But that's not the case. Since the material is super sticky, blows that glanced off my old mask just fine, now get stuck on the rearguard V2, transferring the impact into my head. We do not want that. It's fine for relaxed bouting, but for any full duty sparring, I will get an overlay for this mask as well. That's quite a shame because an overlay will increase the heat within the mask significantly and also you can't use your old overlay as the rear guard is longer. Being longer means that the triangle of death is quite a bit smaller and now also behind my neck. I like it. But being longer also means a longer lever to turn your head with a strike at the back part. The double bib of the mask isn't designed perfectly as well. It's thick and super stiff, which actually forces the mask to look up in full gear. The problem diminished a bit over the three months of wearing it, but it's still not perfect and something to be aware of. There are also two plastic loops inside the mask for a band securing your head. I don't use it as it worsens the problem of the bib and I like my mask to not be as tight as possible. The extra space translates into less force absorbed by your head. The mask is certified with a 1600 Newton bib and a 1000 Newton mesh, which holds up fine so far. Also, arming guild are really nice to deal with and respond quickly. During transport, one of the rivets broke and they didn't hesitate to cover for the repairs which still awaits due to lockdown, but oh well. So, is it the perfect mask? No. But it's quite a big step in the right direction. It's not cheap, but not so super expensive like other specialized models either. With an overlay, I'd definitely recommend it. If you have any questions left, leave them in the comments. Remember to like and subscribe to support the channel. Until next time, take care.